What's up guys, it's Skill Up here with another Division video. Today I wanted to take you through a hard mode sort of guide for uh, for the new Incursion Dragon's Nest. I call it a sort of guide because it's pretty easy to be honest with you and you're really not going to struggle with it on hard mode all that much. But I just wanted to provide you an overview of the basic mechanics because some of it can actually be a little bit confusing and we did learn some things along the way that I think are going to be really useful to you as you go through challenging and uh, heroic mode which comes out next week. So first of all, it's uh, set in a cleaner context. That means you are fighting against uh, cleaners and that there is a lot of fire in this uh, in this uh, incursion, like a lot of fire. And the fire principally comes from two places. The first is from the really large fat enemies that we've all dealt with in the past, the ones with lots of big gas tanks on them. And obviously the way to deal with them is just to blow up their tanks. Note uh, that uh, this will actually deal area damage and it will also stagger those, uh, those enemies. So make sure that you do hit their tanks as a priority uh, because yeah, if they get up in your face, it is going to be a very, very big problem with you as we learned many times over while we were trying this on challenge mode. The other major source of fire is from a new enemy type. Uh, well, sort of a new enemy type. They, uh, the technicians now have a new tool in their belt. They used to just be able to put up uh, turrets. Now they're actually dropping these remote control drones. These things are super fast and super annoying. They are coming at you thick and fast. I mean, they just like keep spamming these things and if you let them uh, and uh, when they do start moving they're really really quick so they can actually be quite tricky to kill and when they do hit you they deal tons of damage so I mean uh, they probably took about half my life when I was running about uh, 420k HP uh, sorry 420k toughness with 50% uh, exotic damage resilience. That's on the, uh, the hard mode. They, they hit quite hard. And on, on, on challenge mode, they actually completely one shot me with that level of mitigation on. So they're, uh, they're a very big threat. You can actually kill them. And what uh, one pro tip that I would offer you is try and focus on killing those RC machines as they go out. Uh, put someone in your group on techie control. It's their job to look at the techies, see when they are uh, casting or using that uh, remote control car ability. If they are, call it out. Make sure everyone starts focusing down those cars quickly. They take literally like three SMG bullets to, to drop even on uh, challenge mode. But, uh, you know, when you do drop them, uh, it obviously saves you a lot of time and hassle because uh, the fire that they leave on the ground is actually just as damaging as uh, the uh, ex explosion itself. Not in the sense that uh, it does damage to you per se, but what it'll actually do is zone you or it'll stop you from moving in that area, which can be a really big disruption for you because it's really important to keep moving. So all of this is by way of saying, please wear lots and lots of exotic damage resilience. I really strongly recommend wearing final measure two piece in this. I actually don't think you could do uh, challenge mode without it. Uh, hard mode, you might be able to get away with it, but expect to die a fair amount. Challenge mode, I just think it would be impossible. We were trying to run one person who didn't have two piece final measure and uh, they were just instantly dying to anything. I mean, I was dying and I had two piece final measure and 420k toughness. So uh, just be aware of that, that uh, exotic damage resilience is going to be very, very important to you. And also protection uh, from elites, you know, damage reduction from elites is also going to be useful. You really want to stack as much mitigation as possible to make this as easy as as possible for yourself because uh, it's not really a DPS race. The mobs don't just keep coming over like a, they don't just keep pouring out and you need to keep up with them. You can actually just sort of kill them as slowly as you like. The most important thing is for you to stay alive. And uh, right now that is actually quite tricky given all of the fire that is constantly coming at you. But anyway, uh, in this uh, second large area you're seeing here, it's uh, really just a pretty straightforward affair. You know, you're killing quite a few mobs uh, and eventually the uh, bosses will start to spawn. When this happens, I really recommend that all of you stack up in one door and just wait for the boss to come out. As soon as he comes out, pop consumables like water or explosive bullets or whatever you got and then just burn him the hell down. Uh, on hard mode, he has very little health. And in fact, even on challenge mode, you're probably not going to struggle to burn one of these guys down really quickly. So long as uh, you, know, you are all focused on it and you're popping consumables. As you can see here on hard mode, we sort of stuffed around a little bit. We weren't fully focused and uh, we still managed to get him down fairly quickly. And then after that, you'll notice that uh, more mobs will spawn from all of the doors. So clear those out before starting to um, try on the other mobs. Uh, you'll actually get more um, 
trash spawning or trash as being like non-boss enemies. You'll get more of those spawning with every boss that you kill. So just be aware of that. Every time you drop one, you're going to get new trash. Uh, so just time it that way. Make sure you don't uh, blow them all up at the same time. Otherwise, you're just going to be a little bit overwhelmed. Just make sure you kill them one at a time. Uh, and uh, that's it. So in terms of how you might keep yourself safe, we were sort of just sticking up on this end because it was fairly easy to do that. We had Marco style down in the middle there tanking everything. Now, that was easy for him because he's a tactician with uh, really high exotic damage resilience and about 620k toughness, I believe. So he just kind of like sat there with smart cover and was able to tank the entire instance quite cheesy but it worked um, absolutely cannot do this on challenge mode you will get melted on challenge mode if you tried to do this so uh, that was sort of where we run in, ran into big trouble but uh, regardless if that if you don't have someone as tanky as that in your group it's possible to just keep moving around the map uh, pull all of the bosses to one end and then run to the other end and then snipe them from a distance as they approach you they move quite slowly and then do exactly the same thing run the other end go back and forward until they're eventually all dead you really won't have too much trouble with this on challenge mode so long as as i said you get one of them down at the beginning and then you kind of um, have a really tanky person either tanking all the damage or you just kite the uh the bosses around and when i say kite i mean you actually kind of like pull them and 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 direct them or sort of like lead them where you would like uh, based on that. So uh, so yeah, you, you're not going to struggle with this part at all. In the next area, there's a bit of trash. You clear that out. Nothing to talk about there. Very, very straightforward. Very simple. And then we get to the boss area. Now, it felt a little bit familiar when I stepped into this space. It kind of reminded me of Falcon Lost where there's like an enemy vehicle at the other end that's perfectly stationary firing away at us. And um, what, uh, you know, and then obviously there's mobs that are spawning. Now, the mobs will constantly spawn as you do this. Uh, there's little breaks in between some of them, but uh, yeah, that's it. But you'll notice here that your your the floor is going to intermittently go on fire, and when that happens, you need to get the hell off the floor uh, because the floor will light up. It will, as you can see, they're just covered in fire. If you stand in that, you will obviously take a lot of damage. Um, if you have smart cover and plenty of exotic damage resilience, you can actually tank that fire pretty comfortably. But, uh, you know, without that, you will definitely get wrecked by it. I haven't, we didn't get up to this part on challenge mode, but we're certain that we're going to get uh, absolutely melted by that fire if we touch it. Now, in terms of what you need to be doing here, you're noticing these panels that are on the wall, the, those little buttons that I'm looking at there very briefly. Um, in, above you, there's actually a large tanker of water. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to move that tanker of water toward the uh, fire engine at the, at the, at the end. And uh, you, the way you do that is by pressing these buttons, these panels uh, will eventually bit by bit move that uh, tanker toward that fire engine. So uh, we had no idea what we were doing at first. We we're kind of just running around wildly. But uh, that is ultimately what you do. And you'll see these panels are red, which means that uh, you do need to hit them. The problem is that you can't actually hit them until enough time has passed. So you've killed enough enemies and then they become activated. So you have basically got to survive. You've got to avoid avoid the stuff on the floor while you're waiting for them to become activated and once that happens you can hit the button and you will then move that crane that holds the water tank closer and closer towards the fire engine and that will then end the encounter so you're just going to get lots of waves of enemies during this time note that um there's also a lock box, a restock box on the left. Note that that does not respawn. Um, so that's a one-time use thing and after that bad luck you've got to survive on your own. Um, Note that after a while that uh, some enemies will start appearing from the top. So right now, you, all the enemies are appearing that are on the bottom. But eventually, enemies will start appearing from the uh, the railings or the walkways up on the sides. And they can be quite damaging because uh, they've got a really good line of sight on you. It's quite risky. Uh, other things to note is that if you are in the pit and this side of the room is on fire as in you know this the pit does not protect you from fire is what i'm trying to say you know if you if the that side of the room is on fire then the pit is also going to be ablaze so don't uh, try and outsmart the uh, the fire uh, we tried to look for a spot where you could stand that was protected from the fire while you know let's say there's like an area of the map that's red we tried to like stand on boxes and that sort of thing we couldn't find any way to cheese the fire um, it all looks like uh, you know if you're anywhere near that red zone you're going to get 
hit by it. The other thing to mention is that the fire engine also will fire at you. It has a big sort of like flamethrower hose. If you get close enough to it, it will uh, it will use it. Um, so stay away from the fire engine unless, uh, well, actually stay away from it full stop. And actually, unless you really have to be close to it, which you will need to at the end, because there are some buttons that you need to press uh, that are up close to the fire engine. So that's it. But look, just basically rinse and repeat as you go through this. The buttons become available at different points in time. You'll eventually notice it because your objective will update. Hit the buttons when they become available and eventually the tank will move closer. There doesn't seem to be any pattern to it. There's no order. There's no trick. It's basically just like hit the buttons when you're meant to and uh, and that's it. That's how that's how you do it. Anyway, guys, uh, that's that's the very brief overview. As I said, I'm hesitant to call this a proper guide because as you can tell, it's really just a rough sort of bumbling through the mechanics, explaining to you the overall view of uh, what you can expect. I think the real guide will come in challenge mode and in heroic mode when the uh, encounter is properly tuned and really challenging that's when we'll have to start really talking about what a proper guide might be but uh, yeah so if you're looking forward to that then uh, be sure to subscribe that's obviously on the way i'm also going to upload my complete clear of this on normal mode just in case anyone's interested to watch it while they're at work or something um and uh, yeah but guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did a like would be super appreciated and uh as i said if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button now uh thanks very much for watching guys take care of yourselves and i will see you in the dark zone bye, -bye.